let's have a lesson on this work. Uh, follow the lesson for free and pick up some of the tips. But if you're interested, I do have a free sheet music edition of this piece, uh, and there's a link for that in the description. It's just a PDF download. There's no sign up required, so you can go grab it and follow along. Um, in regards to this piece, in terms of level, um, this is part of a collection of works I'm putting together that are, are relatively easy as a supplement to my Volume 1 and Volume 2 method book. So some extra pieces to play as you move through my method books and eventually move on to my graded series. So for this particular piece, I would play this probably after my Volume 1 method book or during my Volume 2 method book. It's, it's relatively straightforward, but nevertheless, there's some, you know, full chord shapes and a couple of little fingering things to pay attention to. So I think completing my first volume one method book is a good idea first. In this piece, uh, in regards to tempo, um, you can, if you take it much slower, just make sure that you're still getting kind of the, you know, the waltz feeling of a strong first beat and that you're gliding through it. You know, you don't want too much, too much of those chords. So really emphasizing the strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak, one, two, three, one, two, three. And to tell you the truth, at faster tempos, I really just feel the first beat of each measure. Here, 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 here. You know, just really feeling the first beat of each measure. Um, there's, you know, you could think of the upper line as the melody in this piece. Um, but really, you know, we've got a kind of a little waltz feel with some chords and then some small melodic fragments that, that you can contour. Um, I think that's just about it. We'll do a walkthrough of the piece and there's just one or two like right hand fingerings to discuss, but like I said, all fairly straightforward. The first section is mainly in C major, so you can map out those chords of Cs and G7s. Um, and the second section is in A minor. Uh, so a little bit of, of contrast in that second section. I like to play the first section a little bit more extroverted and the, the second section a little bit more introverted. So just maybe you could do loud or soft or just hold back a little bit on the minor section if you like. In terms of the roadmap, um, repeat each section as written on the page, but on the DCL fine, you just go back to the beginning and play right to the fine without repeats. You know, I think it's really important that you, you emphasize the bass a little bit just to help you glide through that repeated chord, which can be um, you know, a little bit repetitive. So make sure you get a gliding, like a, a certain amount of sustain in the bass to bring you through the bar to simplify the feeling of the piece. Just playing that all with I and M alternation. At the end, I just do M, I, P, but you could do I, uh, I, M, P, whichever you prefer. Measure nine. Now, uh, the fingering that I've chosen for, for that measure uh, 11 and 12 is a very specific fingering to avoid repeating fingers. So I'm going A, I and M, A, M. So that allows me to play through that without repeating any right hand fingers um, during at least those notes from the D from there. As a teacher, you know, we've been learning and as a student, you've been learning about um, alternating our fingers. Uh, so I use that fingering there because it, it does allow us to alternate our fingers and not repeat fingers. To tell you the truth, um, at slower tempos especially, you could just use I and M and just repeat fingers a lot. You could just go M, I am, M, I, like you could, it's not so fast that you can't repeat fingers. Uh, and it's totally acceptable to repeat fingers as long as it sounds legato. As long as it sounds like, like that, it's acceptable sounding. My recommendation to most students is 
practice it both ways. Make sure that you're able to do the fingering I've listed on the page because later on in your development, that those kinds of specific fingerings will be needed for, for faster passages and for legato you know, fingering. So therefore, uh, make sure you get that educational aspect of it. Push comes to shove, uh, if you're performing the piece and you like to just repeat fingers, go ahead and do so there, but make sure you practiced alternating them because I think it's important. And that's another reason why I would say definitely complete my volume one method book first, because um, then you'll be pretty comfortable with all the notes. You'll just have this little thing to practice. And when you practice those things, just go very slow and work it out. throw in the rest of the bar you know just you just do it until you're comfortable with the pattern it's pretty easy so yeah you can use mine just a little discussion there um, where I'm saying it's okay if you just repeat fingers and use I am however I would think that my fingering is is more educationally beneficial and and a better fingering uh, but such an easy piece you can play through it legato in either way uh, I think this piece will pair very nicely with number two, which I'm also presenting by, by Pratton. Um, it's nice to have uh, some female composers um, at the earlier earlier levels, which we don't see a lot of in the, eight, in the 18th and 19th century. Um, they are out there, but not as much um, easy material at this level. So uh, I'm really appreciative to Emma Rush, who sent me this collection by Pratton, um, because there's some nice little pieces in there, which, I, which I'll be um, adding to the collections on the site. So I hope you enjoy it, and you can look forward to number two coming out soon.